Welcome to the Childcare Genius Podcast, proud to be the world's number one community for brilliant childcare leaders. Each episode will feature interviews with the brightest minds in the childcare industry to guide you into becoming a smarter business leader. Our hosts have opened 10 schools while raising five children. They are certified business coaches and are the top selling childcare business book authors of all time. This episode is sponsored by Elif Childcare Insurance. Give Blake a call at 972-232-2258 to get a free quote on childcare business insurance today. Let's welcome to the Childcare Genius Podcast, our hosts, Brian and Carol Dupre. Welcome to episode 80 of the Childcare Genius Podcast. We're your hosts, Brian and Carol Dupre. We have a great episode lined up for you today. We are so excited. And um, so it's Black History Month. So all of our guests this month are African-American child care business owners that are really rocking it uh, in the child care industry. All these couples that we have this month are actually couples that Carol and I coach uh, mm-hmm. that we've been working on uh, with for the last year or two. And um, so we're excited today to have a special guest, Jeff and Tina Banks. Uh, before we get started, I want to remind you that we have a conference coming up in Las Vegas, April 14th, 15th, 16th. Tickets are still on sale. Uh, go to childcaregenius.com for more information. They should be selling out any day, um, but go ahead and reach out though. So like I said, we've interviewed Jeff and Tina Banks, and this is a fun interview. And <laughs> we got to tell you a story. While we're filming this, we have never had to edit a podcast. Like we've got it right. We've done 100 episodes. And we've got it right every time. And right we got on, Tina goes, have you ever had to edit one of these? We're like, no, No. we've never had to edit a guest ever. We've got it perfect 100 times. Season 118 episodes, season 2, 80 episodes. We've we've done it 98 times flawlessly until today. (laughs) Well, we had audio problems recording. So this is an actually edited episode. And it, but you know, we had to splice a little bit, but we pride ourselves in not having to edit, but we had a little bit of audio problems. But so be careful what you wish for or talk about because sometimes it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. But anyway, I don't know why I told you that. Didn't have to tell you that. You would never have known, but because we're so transparent, there's no phoniness here. We'll let you know that we did have to edit this episode. We feel a little bit bad. Uh, but anyway, it's going to be a great one. They're a great couple. Let's go ahead and get Jeff and Tina on the line. Hi, Jeff and Tina. Welcome to the Child Care Genius Podcast. How are you guys today? Doing good. How are you guys good. doing, Brian and Carol? Good. Morning. Outstanding. <laughs> well, it's awesome. snowy day up here in Maine. How, where are you guys located? We're here in sunny Statesboro, Georgia. Yeah. Our cold is not your cold. Uh, Our cold is only like 30. (laughs) Well, yours is probably 30 below. (laughs) (laughs) Is it, uh, is it, what's, what's the weather like this time of year? I guess it's probably cool for you. You probably still be in shorts, but for us, it's, uh, right now it's, it's 35, 40. Oh, it's 51 right now. This morning when I got up, it was about 40. That's shorts weather. When we got up, it was like 15. (laughs) We figured you'd say that. Yeah. Oh, well, I wear shorts anytime it's above 30 here in Maine. Um, because that's Mm warm, especially this time of year. If we get in the 30, that's a good thing. So uh, we'd love to hear more about you. So I want to hear a little bit about your background, how you guys met, what's your life like before you started the child care business? Paint a picture of what your life was like. Well, um, about 1990, that's when we, we first met. My uh, my very best friend was like, hey, man, you got to see this girl. She, you know, she's just all that and everything. And um, we went to her house and I saw her for the first time and I just, you know, all of this. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, uh I was really uh really 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 um love at first sight for me. I don't know about her, but <laughs> we still didn't really get together until 92. So we started dating in 92 and we got married in 95. Uh, actually, tomorrow is our anniversary, 29 years. 
Wow. Wow. Congrats. That's awesome. Two years before you fell in love at first sight and it took you two years to go on a date? Well, for one thing, my best friend really did like her a lot. Ah. <laughs> I had to break the news to him. All right, Tina, fill us in what the real truth is. Yeah. I'm I mean, kidding. So, so they came by my house. He said it was his cousin and come to find out they were only friends. And I was only 15 years old. But um, I liked his friend a lot. But being 15, you know, I was still young and still wanting to um, finish high school and all of that. Yeah. So it took some time. That's awesome. I, I love that story. That's amazing. Uh, so 29 years married. Is that right? Yep. As of tomorrow. Well, congrats. That's a long time. We've been married just a little bit longer than that. And yeah, it was love at first light when I saw her too. I mean, it's just one of those things you just know, right? You just know it, yeah. don't you? <laughs> she couldn't stand me when she first met me. <laughs> That's I had to grow. I had to grow on her a little bit. I was a little, a little, a little, a little ego thing going on, you know, the Navy guy. Anyway, so uh, that's cool. Cool story. Um, so could you tell our audience about your child care centers and why you're different from other centers in your area? Well, I would say one thing that sets us apart is that we're very community oriented. Like this year. Starting January 1st, we started this thing at our school called Kiddo Gives Big. So each week we give something to someone in the community, whether it's paying a water bill or a car note or dinner for two. We've done quite a few things like that. And we plan on doing that once a week, each week this year. Another thing that we do is that we have a lot of events not just for the families in our school, but also for families in the community. So next month, we're gonna have an event called the Mommy Refresher. And with this event, we're gonna just have a time for moms to come in and let their hair down. We're gonna have childcare for them. We're gonna have body massage, massages and food for them to eat. So just a nice time for them to come in and fellowship and have discussions about mommy things. I love that. Another thing yeah. that... um we do is um, we feel like outdoor play is huge. I remember watching a video from the UK and it was talking about the name of the video is called Free the Children. And it was talking about how the prisoners have more outdoor time than children in childcare facilities. And so that was a great eye opener for me. And I feel like it's a, a huge thing for children to be able to experience a lot of the things that they experience in the classroom in the outdoor setting. And I awesome. found that it's healthier for them too, just to have that fresh air. That's so awesome. those are some of the few things that set us apart. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Carol and I have been to your schools. We've toured them all and we absolutely love your program. We think it's top notch and one of the best Thanks. programs we've toured many in Georgia and, and uh, you're one of the best we've ever seen. Well, we toured them all out over the country and you're one of the best programs we've ever seen. So we're, you should be proud of what you put together. Well, we appreciate you guys for coming. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. For sure. So what obstacles did you face when you were trying to open your schools? I would say just being alone because I started as an in-home and I felt very isolated because I was there by myself with the children you know, it, it was like um, a few days that I got sick and I was just there alone and I really couldn't, you know, tell the parents to come get their kids. But um, once I got connected with the community, like with the CCR and art, I started to um, get different types of resources to help us to grow and um, things picked up from there. Awesome. So February's Black History Month. Can you tell us what that means to you? Uh, I'm, I'll take this one. Uh, as far as Black History Month goes, I, I feel like uh, there's a lot of things like uh, people who say, hey, there there should be, you know, there's just ha a whole month instead of the whole year and things like that. But I still see that since there's a whole month dedicated to it, we learn things during that month, like uh, including in the curriculum and um, in the schools. And since the focus is Black history, 
uh, a lot of the kids or or even families who identify as African American or or Black, um, there's a whole month dedicated to it. They get to see some of the things that since the focus is there, they get to see some of the things that you don't normally see throughout the year. I think that's a good thing. Um, I wish there was more. We try to do a little bit more. Hey, you know, this person did this and, you know, he looks kind of like us. But um, there's a lot of time spent in really putting those things together during this month um, or this coming month that focuses on things, a uh, great accomplishment, seeing that minorities can do great things also. You guys are making history and you are history and you have done amazing with your schools. And regardless of color, you have done super amazing. And it goes to show you in America, anybody could succeed with a little bit of hard work and determination. And, um, and there, the reason we're highlighting for African-American business owners this month during Black History Month is to show that couple out there or that single person out there that, that maybe feels that they don't have those opportunities, that you can do it. Other people have succeeded. And I always do the saying, God is no respecter of persons. If you do the same work somebody else does, you can succeed regardless of the obstacles because you had obstacles and you overcame them. Oh, yeah. The obstacles are always going to be there. We could use them as stumbling blocks or we could use them as learning tools and just step over them. And um, that's why I wanted to highlight them this month. And you guys, you guys are history to me. You've done well. You've put an example to your children, unbelievable. And we got to meet um, one of your children at our visit and how amazingly well behaved and respectful. And it gets a testimony to what amazing parents you are. So you've done a good job. Anyway, let's move on. So what are some strategies you use in working together so you don't get on each other's nerves? Now, this is something we teach a lot, you know, staying yeah. in your own lane. And, you know, Carol's wanted to kill me only a few times per day for the last 33 years, but um, we have got it figured out now. So what, what do you guys use? What are your strategies for working together? Well, what, like you mentioned, the main thing is staying in our lane. We know what we're good at and we just stick to that and we don't cross over. And um, that's helpful. Um, Jeff, he works a lot um, remotely from home and I go into the center. So that kind of, you know, gives us that gap there as well. Mm -hmm. But um, I, we really enjoy, you know, believe it or not, we really enjoy working together. We've done it so long and um, this is just what we're used to. Yeah. So some people I've had come to me and say, I don't know how you do it. And I always say, I don't know how you do it, not working with your spouse. Like right. I would never not want to be with Carol all day long. Very seldom are we apart. And I, I would, she, we got back from three weeks in Jamaica where we spent literally 24 seven, the whole time together. I mean, not even a minute apart. And she went for a doctor's appointment, gone a couple hours. And I'm like, I missed you. I was <laughs> like lost without her, you know? She was yeah. probably like, thank you. I get some time to myself. I was wow. like, I miss you. Um, so yeah, some people just don't understand that. And the, the like you said, having lanes and knowing what your roles are. And Carol and I are very clear. And I stay out of her business. She stays out of my business. And yeah. we, we, we figured it out. And when she has a question, she comes to me. And when I have a question, I come to her. And we figured it out. But it wasn't easy. Yeah. You yeah. still it have takes challenges. Time. Yeah, it takes time. But at the end of the day, it's worth it. And you know what? Your children saw all that time you guys working together. Yeah. And it became a, a positive that, that that was good. You know, mom and dad are always together. And you have a good, healthy relationship. Yeah, probably not, probably not friction-free. But you figured out how to deal with it in a respectful yeah. manner. And 29 mm -hmm. years, something's working. Oh, oh yeah. Yep. In today's yeah. society, that goes to show you something's working. So maybe there's a correlation out there. If you don't work with your spouse and you think it would be impossible, talk to some people that have done it and know mm -hmm. that it's it's not as hard as you think if you know how to do it. Exactly. That's the All key. Right. Um, moving yeah. on. How has coaching helped you grow your business? Let me take this one. Mm -hmm. I would say that coaching has provided us with a community of like-minded people. So when we're talking about something that we're going through, they can fully relate to it and give us different advice on how to deal with different situations. And also having the one-on-one -on -one calls each month 
to be able to get feedback on that has been really helpful for us as well. Yeah. And I, and I love coaching guys been, been, been amazing. Um, you're really, you're good students. You know, I coach some people where I get on a call with them and I can't get a word in edgewise because they're doing all the talking and you guys are good listeners and you learn and you ask a question and you wait for a response and you do what is suggested, you oh, know, yeah. and our team, you listen to them and you come to our events, you know, you, 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 you're engaged and you're, you're getting your value out of it. And if you just join a coaching group and don't do anything, it's you're better off not joining it. It you, you you know you're spending money, you're investing in your business, and you're getting a return, which is much greater than what you had. And and one good thing about being a VIP client with us is we actually get to come to your school and visit, which is it's so much different when you coach somebody when you've seen all of their schools exactly, and you see things that they didn't see. And I help you like you call blind spots. We all have them in our own business. I even have in my own business. So having somebody else coming in and, and seeing where those blinders are, and we gave you some suggestions of where your blinders might be. And then it's up to you to, to take action on them. And, and um, that's what we love about VIP coaching. It's awesome. So Tina, Jeff, where do you see yourself three years from now? In three years, we see us continuing to run and grow our businesses and uh, continuing to acquire more real estate. That's our number one goal. Yeah. Uh, and I, I see no problem with you just continuing to grow and increase yeah. profitability and increase your culture and uh and have fun. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Have fun. Enjoy it. Real estate is a fun thing to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I enjoy it too, and, yeah. Yeah, it's fun. You attended our leverage conference in Jamaica. What was your experience like for both of you there? Simply incredible. Yeah. Just just being around the other couples in the room and all of the wealth of knowledge that we hadn't heard before was just first class. And being in the Jamaica. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys made a reel about Jeff and he actually said this was the first conference that he even opened his book for. So yeah, that actually, says a lot. I took notes and, and uh, still have them. Still look back at the uh, how to conduct meetings between ourselves. Um, that was one thing that it was a, just focused on just the business. It was more focused on the, it was holistic almost like between us, how we deal with each other, how we deal with the uh, staff. And there's more to business than just that business where we can have multiple streams of income like real estate. Oh yeah. Uh, I learned a lot too. <laughs> That's great. One thing I like about uh, the conferences, most conferences, child care you go to, it's usually 10% men in the room. But our conferences tend to be about 40% men. It was. Yeah. Um, which is couples building a business together. And that's, you know, being a guy in the business, I always felt like I was the way minority in the room, 10%. And just just feeling awkward and and out of place, like I'm in the wrong room, and uh, that's what I like about the leverage conference. We had a lot of other guys to hang out with. We got to talk to other men in the business that that are active, and we actually have some men in the business that their wives aren't even involved. So we we have actually the opposite uh, than the norm as well. So I think that's one of my favorite parts of the business, just being able to relate to to other guys. We also had a lot of guys there that. Um aren't building the business with their wives, but they attended the conference so that they could learn more about it. Yeah. You know what I heard from women uh, that came and they said, you know what? My husband finally understands how hard my job is. They appreciate me more. They realize, oh my God, this is not just babysitting. So if you're out there listening right now and your spouse just doesn't understand how hard a job you have as an owner, bring them to our conference. They will have a whole new understanding and get around other men in the business. And you'll, you'll think differently about childcare and realize that, Hey, this little hobby of yours could, could, could be a million dollar profit business. And that's what I heard from some people. I said, oh my God, you can make a million dollars a year profit in this, this corporate executive goes, my wife could make more than me in childcare. Can't she? I was like, darn well, she can. And that's what they saw that it wasn't just a hobby. So that's what we liked about the conference. So if you guys can had a chance to do it all over again, rewind, what would you do differently? Ron, just to be honest with you, I believe that I would want to do it the 
the exact same way or slightly different, but I've always wanted to grow with the business. I wanted to start small and learn how to, how to deal with parents and then grow to the next level, which we started with six and then we went to 12, then we went to 18 and then we just kind of grew from there. And with each growth spurt that we went through, I was able to learn like HR because I never went to school for any type of, you know, manage business management or anything like that. So I believe that starting small for us and growing with the business, we were able to learn each step of the way. So for that, I really wouldn't want to change that part of it. That's awesome. Jeff, would you do anything different? Um, I would be more open to receiving help. Uh, we did a lot on our own to, because when you're like having it in your hand, you have more control. But there was a lot of people who wanted to help us where we, well, we got this. And when we started getting coaching and everything else, uh, other people starting to open up. Well, we opened up to other people. That's when we started to flourish even more. Um, so I, I think for me, opening up to other people and being a, being coachable that was a, a game changer in, in my life, uh, probably, and listening to her a lot more other than I got this. <laughs> That's awesome. Love that story. And people have asked me, said, what would you do differently at a chance? I, I only say one thing, because I wouldn't change anything in my business because any any failures, any centers that I open that end up closing, those were learning experiences and know what to do. So I don't look at that. The only thing I would do differently is I would meet Carol sooner so I could love her longer. That's the only thing I would do differently. I say it a hundred times. Um, I would have wanted to be your first kiss because I'm hoping I'll definitely be your last I guess we have to die together and you can't get remarried. So we have to, we have to, we have to work that in. So I make sure I get the last kiss or, or do you die before me. So that'll work too. But anyway, how morbid I am. <laughs> do you have these conversations? I think what he should do differently is he should have started listening to me a lot earlier. You started what? Listening to me a lot earlier. Oh, uh, that would have been, we, oh my God, <laughs> we would be like billionaires today if that would have happened. I started listening to Carol on real estate way too late. Um, our portfolio probably three times big as big now. Um, but again, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Don't and know. it takes a little while for this, this. This head was a little thick. Uh, so our, our whole real estate business is thankful to Carol. She got me pushed in the right direction. Way and to I go, Carol. finally got open to it. <laughs> anyway, um, that's part of that lean thing. Yeah. It's like stay in your lane. Real estate is mine. She's like, well, you know, you ain't doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get the ball moving. So we clashed a little bit, but eventually we figured it out. Anyway, thanks so much, guys, for coming on to the Childcare Genius Podcast. It was a great story. As you can know, we we do things a little different on our podcast. We just we just have fun. Yeah. And we really, you know, we uh we rarely we rarely uh edit things out and we just, you know, yeah, we kind of make it fun. We're genuine. There's no phoniness here. So what you see is what you get. I would like to say that. And we were when we were with you live. Is that the truth? Yes. It's, we're <laughs> we are just this much fun as you see on our podcast. A I R L for you young people in real life. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> guys, thanks so much. Hope you have a good rest of your day and. Uh, Wish you all the best down in Statesboro, Georgia. We look forward to our the next visit down there uh, to your amazing school. Have a Thank good day. Thank you all for having us on the podcast today. Thank you. Bye bye. That was an incredible interview. Yeah, that was a good interview. I I really love Jeff and Tina. Yeah. Their schools are amazing. They have a good good program, well run, great staff, good yeah. culture. Um, they've even, got good vision. They're just you know they're making history. People. Huh? They're incredible people. Oh, good people. Yeah, Very we love them. People. And big hearts and yeah. um, and good, good owners. And we're good working together. We loved everything about our visit to Statesboro, Georgia. Um, so if you're in help, need help in your child care business, you would like a free coaching call with one of our certified coaches in any area you're struggling in, just go to the coaching tab on childcaregenius.com and select I'd like a free coaching call. And you're guaranteed to come away with two or three items to help you in any area that you are struggling. And this concludes episode 80 of the Child Care Genius Podcast. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy life to spend a little bit of time with us. And just a reminder to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss a future episode of the Child Care Genius Podcast.
We'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Child Care Genius Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please do us a favor and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a future episode. Don't forget to visit our website at childcaregenius.com to see a list of services we offer to help grow your childcare business. Until next time, thank you for being a part of the Child Care Genius community.